All right, y'all. It's time to tell you the story of what happened when we went riding motorcycles with a whole army of disciples in Brazil. It's the sixth annual Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club Brazil run. And we went riding through Sao Paulo with disciples from all over. And yeah, we brought a camera so you could see it too. I'm James Disciple Johnson, founder of Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club. And I like to ride motorcycles and talk about Jesus. I travel around the world teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and riding motorcycles. On this episode, I'm traveling in Sao Paulo, Brazil with my brothers from across the country to ride motorcycles to the Brazil run with my wife, Armela Shivers, and join church services around the country to both baptize those who want to get saved, lay hands on the sick, and see people healed. And of course, we do some motorcycle riding along the way. So come on and ride motorcycles and talk about Jesus with us. I thought you might want to go riding through rush hour traffic in Rio de Janeiro with me. We're on the red line, the Sprexway. As you can see, there's almost no lanes marked. We are going between traffic. I'm trying to keep up with one hand here while filming with my cell phone, but there's people on motorcycles behind me that want to go faster. They're honking at me. This is crazy. How are we going to live through this? We are going full speed lane splitting through crazy traffic right now in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I have to tell you that this sort of behavior is completely legal in Brazil and most countries. And of course in Brazil there are tons of cops and they're quite visible. One of the unusual things about the police in Rio is that they always leave their lights on no matter where they are. They even will have their siren on, they'll pull up behind you and you'll think, gosh, I'm getting pulled over. Nope, they're just doing some visibility here on the street, because that's what they do. Keep the lights on. Now, I did a lot of riding when I was in Brazil. Nine hours south from Rio de Janeiro to Sao Paulo, and then another nine hours south from Sao Paulo to Curitiba. And I can tell you, I really appreciate the brothers who let me ride their motorcycles throughout the country. It was an amazing, amazing thing. Having brothers that have a place for you to stay and a motorcycle for you to ride and a backup vehicle to carry your gear, wow, that is such an amazing thing. And I just thank God for the Brothers of Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club Brazil. And I gotta tell you, the brothers and their wives, their families, incredible, good, kind-hearted people. Everybody in Brazil was looking out for us. We had such a great time. And I'll tell you, not only were they looking out for us, but they were showing that brotherhood and sisterhood that you expect to find. As well, the countryside itself was absolutely beautiful. Brazil is a beautiful country, a lot of mountains, a lot of uh, rainforests, and it's a really incredible place to be riding a motorcycle. You'll notice that when I'm on the road in most of these places, I'm riding at the back of the pack. That's me standing on my motorcycle on the back, stretching my back there. And I like to be at the back of the pack because I'm looking around. These guys are showing me their hometown. They're showing me the place that's important to them. And I am just enjoying being a sightseer and seeing it all because it's Brazil. Wow, when do you get to go to another country and ride with an army of brothers? It's so amazing. And I appreciate them showing me around because I don't know where I'm going. It would be easy for me to go down in some other country, get injured or die and never see my kids again. And honestly, that's a major thing that's always been in my mind when I'm traveling in these other countries. You gotta be safe, you gotta be careful. Cause Lord knows we've seen some stuff happen. Sure enough, there were a couple small instances we caught on camera on this trip. Okay, so Tiago just went down here in Curitiba. The bike's okay, he fell over. He may have an injured leg here or foot. It was a long day after the last day of the run. Nine hours down from Sao Paulo to Curitiba. We were going through traffic and he just grabbed a little too much brake. And you know, he was hurt. We had to do a little bit of work, but he was okay. 
I've seen it all riding with motorcycle clubs for the last quarter century. Ambulance, fire truck, police car, helicopter on the side of the road with some brothers somewhere, cleaning up some blood or just situating people off the road and getting it all taken care of. This is a reminder it's probably good for you to go get some training. With the American Red Cross, your local fire department, FEMA, CERT, there's all kinds of ways for you to get some basic training in first aid and have that skill set if you're going to be riding motorcycles that you can help those who would go down when you're around. Saying in the motorcycle club world, if you haven't gone down, you will. It's good to be prepared. We have some rules around these kind of things too. We don't go and call somebody's old lady until we have an update on what the story is. And we certainly don't go put it out there on the internet for her to find out on social media. We respond to things calmly and coolly, because that's what's important. What's up guys, so this is Tiago. He was the one that was in the wreck yesterday. He was a little scraped up, shoulder up, the arms a little, arms a little messed up. Uh, his foot hurts a little bit, but no broken bones. And uh, the head is okay. And uh, he's wrapped up a little bit on the hand, but he's leaning on the cane. So praise God, thank you for your prayers. God bless you, man. <laughs> and he's got some cool scars on his back, so. <laughs> On the trip back from Curitiba to Rio de Janeiro, which was a solid 12-hour drive, we got to take a rented car, and it was awesome. Roads in Brazil, some of them out in the country, are absolutely beautiful, absolutely well-maintained, and we had a lot of fun driving that car that day by ourselves. Aparecida, Brazil. South America's city of faith. Home to faith and poverty. A reminder that global spiritual warfare requires you to learn. Friday the 13th of January, we'll be meeting in Dallas, Texas to teach you how to do spiritual warfare. You'll hear some of the best Christian musicians and eat some of the best food. Join us in Dallas for the Global Spiritual Warfare Conference, GS Warcon. This is traveling. This is traveling outside of Rio de Janeiro uh, on the way home. So we are a total of three days of travel to get from Curitiba to Rio de Janeiro to fly back to South Carolina, or sorry, fly back to North Carolina and drive back to South Carolina. So it's going to be a total of three days of travel. And here we are driving through the mountains at night uh, outside of Rio. Guys, check out where we are. We're on the road through the mountains to Rio de Janeiro. Check out the road. Show them the roads, shivers. It is crazy. There's something like a thousand foot drop off to our left. There's nothing but trucks and curves and everybody's running through here as fast as they can. They're right on my tail. This guy's passing me right now on the right, even though I'm going as fast as I can. It's just crazy right now on the road to Rio de Janeiro. Show, show, show. So this is the crazy road to Rio de Janeiro. And as you can see, people are just all over the road. And uh, yeah, it's wild. There's semi-trucks going one speed. Everybody's driving at another speed. Everybody's uh, all over the road as far as the curves go and the lines go. And it's extremely curvy. This road through the mountains is uh, its just unbelievable. And people are cutting between traffic. Uh, just wild. Wow, I've never seen anything like this at all. I mean, these are some curvy mountain roads, but man, people are pushing to get through. wonder how driving in Rio de Janeiro works well there are no lanes there are motorcycles cutting between everything and everyone at all times and you just go as fast as you can fast right hush yes let's go well the best part of the run was obviously when we finally got out on the road with all those motorcycles
disciple in Brazil has several charters across several states in Brazil. And all the brothers and their wives came together for the weekend. It was pretty amazing. I really didn't understand how big what we've built in Brazil is. And I have to say I love their level of sophistication and excellence. I was always the guy with the camera, watching somebody do it right. Ah, it's so good. It makes my heart feel good to see these men and women of God who are changing lives in their country. Global revival. Five continents, 23 countries. We're making it a reality. I was an orphan adopted by family, and I'm so thankful that God has given me a true family of choice. Men and women of God around the globe who have the same vision that I have to ride motorcycles and talk about Jesus. Every one of them has a story, and every one of them is perfect. From this expectant mother to all the ladies and their children, such incredible people in DCMC, Brazil. And that man right there with the dreads, Jason Never Die, the Brazil boss, is such an incredible man. I'm so proud to have seen a leader like him raised up in a country so far from where we started our club. another continent. It might be another country. They might speak a different language, but damn it, those are disciples and I'm so proud of them. starts my favorite part of the ride. It's a phenomena I've gotten to do in many countries, in many cities, in many places on different motorcycles. I call it chasing crosses. My God, my God, how good you've been to me that I should ride motorcycles in these foreign lands and teach people about Jesus Christ. My God, my God, how good you've been to me that I should borrow motorcycles and live in houses that aren't mine and be able to share my faith with people around the world. My God, my God, how good you've been to me that you've given me a family of brothers like Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club. says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. I didn't even know that a family like this was the desires of my heart. And yet I can only say how good God has been to me and how much he has given me and how full he has made my heart and how much he has inspired me through the love of these people in all these countries around the world. by myself so if I you know go around it's okay this video was taken on the road on the way out of the campground where we stayed for the Brazil run and we rode through some beautiful beautiful mountains and of course on one of these curves somebody went down but not badly 
There was a couple of bikes actually that slid off this curve and fortunately didn't go off the mountain. But it's an example of how far off into the rainforest and away from emergency services and help you can be when stuff goes wrong. Thousands of kilometers over a huge space of time with an army of guys and some stuff went wrong, but mostly it went right and we had an amazing time riding motorcycles together. I want to remind you that Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club is the world's largest Christian motorcycle club. Check us out at disciplecmc.com. See why we disciple men to have a daily word and prayer time and to return to the old school values of honor, respect, loyalty, chivalry, and love. Buy a t-shirt, support our ministry. Of course, wherever you are, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Pick up my book, The Four Legs, The Four Pillars of Christian Spiritual Development, available January 2023 at GS WarCon in Dallas, Texas.